I had the most amazing relationship with my grandparents. They were the most loving people I've ever known. I grew up in a wee Scottish village and they lived in the house across the street and I spent more time at their house than I did at my own. My grand Kathleen was this very uh, generous maternal presence. She was that lady on the block who takes care of everyone's kids and is always getting into trouble for like handing out sweeties before dinner time. And my granddad Stuart was this ex-cop, like tough guy exterior, but really just like a mischievous teddy bear underneath it all, full of mischief and wisdom. And they were married for 60 years and they were each other's everything. And they also made me their everything. I'm on this spectrum and I've spent a lifetime trying to feel like I belong and connect with others. And they gave me that, they were that for me. They made me believe in my own sense of belonging with unmatched enthusiasm and unbelievable love. And seven years ago, my granddad was sick and he passed away quite suddenly. And I was devastated, I was, in, I was just entirely crushed. And I was living in LA and I rushed home to Scotland to be with my gran. All I wanted in that moment was to hug her and hold her and tell her like, this is gonna be all right, we have each other. But when I got there, my gran died of a broken heart the morning I arrived and I, I didn't get to be with her. And suddenly the two greatest loves of my life were gone within a week of each other and the cocoon of love that we shared sort of just fell apart. And it was a gut-wrenching pain, and all clearing out their cottage. After a harrowing few weeks in Scotland, dealing with the funeral, clearing out their cottage, all that kind of stuff we have to do when our loved ones pass. I returned to Los Angeles feeling hollow, not yet recognizing my life without them. In Scotland, we, we cling on to sort of arbitrary statements of positivity. They don't really mean anything, but they make us feel good about ourselves. For example, when something would go wrong, my gran would always say, when a door closes, a window opens. And I felt driven to start looking for open windows in that moment, signed from beyond that this profound sadness wouldn't last forever. After a, a, you know, a few, after returning to LA, after a few days, I was sort of wandering the city, grieving, ghost-like, walked into a cafe. And I noticed what I can only describe as like, a vintage chic power hipster standing in line with like horn rimmed glasses, wild blonde hair, and like a brightly colored 80s style blazer with a big shoulder pads, looking like the CEO of her own Etsy shop. She was going through her purse and she dropped some coins on the floor and I bent down to help her pick them up and we locked eyes. And there was a little glimmer of mischief in her eye that kind of reminded me of a little gleam my grandparents would get when they were setting up the punchline for a dirty joke or something. There was just something familiar. She left the cafe. Minutes later, I left. I wandered down the street and randomly walked into another shop. And there she was again, the same mystery hipster. And then suddenly my brain is darting to connect dots that possibly aren't there. I'm like, oh, wow, I'm seeing this woman again. Maybe she's meant to haphazardly stumble into my life like something out of a bad lesbian rom-com. We chat, we arrange to grab a drink and I'm left with this mystical fricker, which I thought was window might be opening. Her name was Emily. She was a woodworker, which I thought was so unique and sexy and cool. And at drinks, we really bonded. She confided in me that she had also been grieving. She had lost her baby kitten to a rare disease and had sort of gone out on a mad kitten binging spree and picked up three kittens to replace the one <laughs> that she that had passed away. This was a bit of a red flag, but endearing <laughs> nonetheless. And who was I to question another woman's grief, you know? Bring on the cats. <laughs> We left the bar after midnight, and at this point I'd become like, like hyper-focused on the cats more than the girl. And in my grief, I knew that I'd love nothing more than, to, than the comfort of, you know, cuddling some kittens. So I asked her if I can come home with her to meet them. No hidden agenda, just a spectrumy, naive, catless cat lover. <laughs> Looking to stroke some pussies. <laughs> We arrive at her Echo Park apartment and she opens the door. And my senses are shockingly clobbered with the overwhelming, unmistakable stench of cat shit. <laughs> I gag instantly. As someone who's very sensitive to disgusting smells, there's like all kinds of alarm bells going off. I want to run far away. Yet, I begrudgingly cross the threshold 
into a hot stenchy lair. It feels, <laughs> it feels like a sauna inside the apartment. It's cramped and hot and dingy. I'm surrounded by oppressive dark wooden everything, dark wooden floors, dark wooden tables, chairs, ornaments, vintage brown curtains hang over the window. And I notice this peculiar looking box on the coffee table and as I get closer, I realize it's some kind of handmade mini coffin thing that Emily's clearly woodworked by hand. And suddenly I'm wondering if the dead kitten is inside this box. Like, is that what the horrific smell is? Is there a dead animal in here? My intuition is bellowing at me to bolt. I swiftly turn around to say to Emily, this has been fun, let's just call it a night. Good to see you. To find her standing completely naked in the middle of the apartment. <laughs> in a stance like she's about to chop down a tree or something. And as I'm processing her nakedness, I'm starting to think, huh, I think this woman might want to sleep with me. <laughs> and suddenly it feels shamefully rude not to. I feel, <laughs> I feel cornered and compelled, like I'm trapped in some escape room and the only way out is to fuck this random hipster as quickly and efficiently as possible. So in my panic, I like chase her into the bedroom, like tearing off my clothes, like David Hasselhoff style, like. But as we get into the bedroom, the stench thickens. Yeah. And I realize it's coming from the ensuite bathroom that's attached to the bedroom and I can hear the pained meows of distressed kittens. And they suddenly come spilling out into the bedroom and I'm tripping over them and Emily and I clumsily clamber onto the bed. It's unbearably hot and sticky and pungent but we start kissing. But her breath is indistinguishable from the cat diarrhea. <laughs> I, can, I can taste it. I can taste it in the back of my throat. And to my horror, there are like clumps of wet cat litter scattered around the bed that seem to lodge themselves into every crevice. And I'm, and I'm still kind of thinking about this cat-sized coffin, which is feet away. Somehow a memorial to the fact that I was lowering my grandparents' bodies into the ground days earlier and I'm suddenly bombarded with a barrage of morbidly intrusive thoughts when I realize that these kittens are hopping all over my naked body and I start picking them off like hairy tarantulas and like flicking them away but they keep coming back relentlessly taunting me like a whack a cat with a mallet thing at the fairground. Three cats seemingly become dozens and the rocking motion of our bodies together is making me feel so queasy. I can feel the vomit rising in the back of my throat, ready to detonate at any unexpectedly firm thrust. And the crazy thing is the door is ajar and I can actually see the front door out of the corner of my eye. The exit is right there. Why am I holding myself hostage in this putrid, shite-ridden inferno? Why can't I just ask her to open a window, would you? At this point, Emily and I are all tangled up in some unbecoming pretzel-like position, just a ball of limbs covered in cats. The stench of shite and the heat is so pervasive that it's burning my eyeballs. I well up and tears start to fall onto Emily's naked body. She leans in. You're such an emotional lover. <laughs> she whispers seductively. But I, I feel like I can't see anything. Like I'm so overwhelmed. I'm like, is that a foot next to my face? I'm all foggy and fumbling and faint and dehydrated. Emily is no longer a person. She's just a blob of cat shit with googly eyes. <laughs> In the panic of it all, I start crying, but it comes out sounding more like the mournful mooing of a disgruntled cow being milked. before escalating to the guttural, primal, Tarzan-like howling of a dying animal as I'm fighting swells of grief. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how it sounded. <laughs> and in my frenzy, I just start frantically riding this woman like a bucking bronco at a bachelorette party. It's messy, it's uncoordinated. I can't tell if she's in a roused stupor or deeply disturbed. But we reach a chaotic crescendo of sweating, wheezing, coughing, meowing, moaning. I scream, she screams, the cat scream. The entire thing comes to an abrupt and unremarkable end, as these things often do. Followed by an agonizingly awkward ceremonial-like silence. And I don't know what to do, so I just start sobbing pathetically. And 29 years of loving my grandparents just spills out onto the sheets. One of the kittens comes up and like paws away at my tears, but I flick it away, defeated. Emily rolls over, playing dead. 
and I'm just this sad, crying, naked bundle in her bed. And we lie there facing away from each other, two strangers. I curl up in the fetal position and I surrender to the stench in the heat. Hours later, light trickles through the window and this sparks an internal shift. And you know what? The furniture actually looks kind of nice in the morning light and I slip out of the apartment and into the sun. I arrive home at my own apartment, which feels so clean and so fresh, like a morning meadow and soapy linens. I open all the windows and I curl up in my bed, cocooned against a cool breeze, and I remember what it felt like to be a baby lying in my grandparents' arms. And I feel the quietest, purest grief I've ever felt in my life shiver through every cell as I move through waves of pain. And I'm unsure about pretty much everything in that moment. All I know is that I love my grandparents and I love that my apartment doesn't smell like cat shit. <laughs> Thank you. Woo